Hey everybody, I just wanted to do a news post because there was a lot in the Operation 6 drop 2 that ended up being very catered to PvE. I haven't done a news post like this in a really long time, like I'm talking a year and a half or more. Uh, let me know if you enjoy seeing these news posts, if not, just let me know that too, but considering I didn't pay as much attention to uh, Kadar when that first came out, I figured I would at least try and get back in and know everything before jumping back in with a new horde variant, some modifications to some of the classes, uh, so on and so forth. I'm only going to be focusing on the PvE side of things, which for this it is all horde. Uh, I know there's plenty of versus people to watch for watching anything PvP related. I mean, go watch Shadows, go watch P, go watch Roar, anybody, you know, insert your favorite content creator that plays versus here. There are uh, many of them. Uh, but either way, as far as some cool things that are happening, one, we're getting uh, we're getting Prescott, which is cool. Down for out a new skins, and I really wasn't expecting Prescott so early, so cool beans. Uh, I don't have as much to talk about that. Go watch the trailer, by the way. It is very pretty, and it's very cool, just like the beginning of this Operations trailer was, but go check that out, of course. Uh, where things start getting interesting is we have Tomb, which is a brand new map. It's very reminiscent of like mausoleum combined with like a bit of the mansion feel very much feels like you know the people that have made it were looking at their classic maps that they loved in gears one and bringing a lot of that into the formula it, the biggest things that i saw as far as notes to be taking from this is it's going to be very close quarters there's still going to be some hold off sections um but things are going to be fairly tight knit which seems very interesting for horde I'm, I'm thinking of making a video eventually talking about what I really like to see in maps as far as like a PvE player goes, because I know that definitely varies between what co-op people are looking for versus what versus and competitive people will be looking for in maps. Uh, and I'll be very much looking forward to seeing what this map has to offer. Out of the gate, like, I know this has been a big thing the Gears community has been looking forward to is seeing a lot of these maps that are grungy and dirty, kind of... A lot of maps felt super hyper clean uh, in some of these updates or in like since Gears 4 and 5 in particular. Uh, so this should be right up the community's alley given I'm kind of impartial on that. I like pretty colors. But this seems to be a nice blend of either one. So I'm really looking forward to that. PvP is looking interesting. Execution 2.0. Again, I'm just going to keep this strictly to the PvE side of things because I don't know any better. I've played, I played enough bunny hunt and I got some weird blind fires and that was fun. But apart from that, I don't know enough to save my soul or to actually give valuable opinions on it versus people that actually do play it continually and regularly. Uh, anyway, here we are. So we've got a new horde variant coming in called Nexus Siege which there is a video that they posted here with Michael Shannon. Uh, he's discussing a lot of the details of it. I, it's still worth watching. If you wanted a too long, didn't watch type of ordeal, given a uh, uh, go figure though, Tulu posted like my exact notes <laughs> in Discord right as I was finishing up typing up mine. I just made a quick one note little document here. And also I just use all the Microsoft products because you know, that's what happens when you work for them for a while. Um, but Nexus Siege, the biggest things the, to mention with this is going to be that it takes place in Nexus, obviously. Uh, there's no fabricator, so engineers, you're going to just be looking to go damage cards if you want to try that route, which of course I'm going to experiment with everything I humanly can, and I think that'll be pretty cool. But mainly looking at just going all damage, going a bit more of a classic horde route with this. There are boss waves every two waves which is kind of crazy. And what um, they said as far as the bosses, it's going to be heroes from Gears. They said there's going to be five. They only showed two. So we'll see what the other three are whenever we finally get it. The two that we did see are Karn and Jermad, which Karn being the main villain from Gears Judgment, uh, he's going to be rocking his Baltock pistol. From what they said, he's going to be reserved sitting in the back a lot, or at least it seemed like he's going to be in the back and playing a bit more defensively up until they showed a bit of footage where it seemed like he pushed forward when most of his forces were dead, which was interesting because he was bum rushing the main character, the main person that was playing. And uh, that seemed really cool. He, they all seem to have really high health as well. Now, given it didn't seem like maybe the classes they had laid out did a lot of bleeding damage, so I'll be curious to experiment with that. Uh, but think of it more like a backline commander style player. Uh, and then the second character we got was Jermont. 
which I didn't actually know that much about him. Uh, this is a character, he was the commander, or at least a commander, in the Emergence Day Surgeons. He was like a captain there. He goes back before a lot of the events of E-Day, kind of has a bit of a clash in with uh, Srak, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, like he has a lot of influence it seems like in particular in the comics and stuff like that which is very fascinating to me because this is a character that I saw and I was like this is cool but I didn't know a whole lot about them just from what I've gathered reading books and gathering lore on gears very excited to see what he has to offer as far as how he plays in the horde he's going to be a backline sniper which what they said was very interesting is if that laser lines up on you instant headshot so you can get picked off like you were playing versus. So you've got to be careful. You've got to be dodging. And I'm curious to see how it works to try and counter snipe him. I'm looking forward to that a whole lot. Should be pretty cool. Should be pretty awesome. Um, and then with this, uh, like I said, there's three other bosses that aren't mentioned. The locust enemies are going to be our primary source of enemies. As you see in this picture here, we've got locust and we've got lambent. Now, the big thing that I know they wanted to point out was that these are not carbon copies of what you see in Swarm. Like, you're not going to see a swarm, elite Swarm Grenadier holding on to a claw, if I'm, I might have gotten the name wrong, or like a drone holding on to a hammer burst necessarily. They're going to have their unique traits, which from what I was looking in the video, again, I encourage you to go watching the video yourself. Uh, if you wanted the better juicier details but they were if you if you played through gears one two three in judgment you look and see what weapons the enemies were primarily holding it's very very much reflecting what you've seen in the campaigns you know elite grenadiers are going to be holding what the bolt hawk throwing grenades and if you get close to shotgun so on and so forth kind of think like look think about how you play the campaigns and most of the characters will resemble what we already have experienced in that way, which I, I appreciate that. It, when you see an enemy, you'll immediately go, okay, th this is this is coming back to me, you know, from my 2007 days of original gear, school beans. A good question was asked when they said, are they gonna be bringing back the locust enemies in the main horde? The biggest answer that they gave was just a very simply put, we'll see. So that's vague. And that's that is a big that is like the definition of a maybe uh for me as we'll see I, i'm hoping that's leaning more on the side of yes because i know a lot of people have been requesting more enemy varieties i'm still having fun with the ones we have personally but that's because i'm still new and returning but i am absolutely down for a bigger variety of enemies variety is the spice of my life the more things that they can add in and i can just keep digesting as i'm learning all sounds good all sounds fantastic and I would love to see the enemies return in Mainstay Horde, and this mode seems pretty cool. With no Fabricator, I'm a little bit intimidated. I think we're going to get beat up for a while until we really nail this down, and I'm going to be tryharding in matches so hard. Like, either I'm going to go a Marksman and try my hardest to Icy Precision enemies like crazy, or I'm going to be running Combat Medic to try and revive people, or something. It, 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 I'm excited. I, I'm also curious how this is going to work with trying to get like say a tactician and a demolition going at the same time because you're not going to have the reliance of a fabricator to buy st uh, grenades and to off yourself as well to then throw your contacts in and get more boom shots you're not going to have weapon lockers I saw there was pickup weapons and I'm hoping maybe we can just bank off of the enemies for giving us ammo and resources, but that's gonna be interesting. Uh, if anything, maybe it would be interesting to see if we maybe need to give feedback how the demolition and tactician play. I mean, hey, maybe it'll be a decent like nerf to them <laughs> considering that's a really strong combo overall. Uh, but I feel like that could possibly be unfun if you're still stuck at three boom shots and you really have to be sparing with how you're using it. That could be problematic. But either way, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll reserve that until we actually find out what's going on uh, and when we actually get our hands on playing this. And also, I'm curious to see how everything evolves from a, a little extra note that they did throw into. Apparently, the since the Locust and Lambent are not friends, <laughs> they are very much enemies. They're like, you know, if, if, going through the whole story of Gears, we're going to see them kind of fight each other. It's not going to be as adamant as, say, like, you know, oh, hey, we can sit back and just watch these two folk kill each other. But, you know, maybe if there was a, the way that it was described is like, say if you see a locust enemy down, you might see a lamb go in and, you know, beat him to, beat him to death and do an execution, which, you know, that's cool. <laughs> that's, if, if I heard that right, that's pretty dope. I'm down with that. 
uh the rewards there's going to be tour of duty medals as well as then a palace guard weapon skin which they said is not going to be a copy of the palace guard weapon skin set that we've seen previously something new designed given that immediately makes me think it's going to be gold and i'm not a big fan of gold colors but that's just my personal taste either way i could go for new weapon sets so go mains sounds good moving on and oh yeah here we go nexus siege will run for two weeks and runs alongside of a special metal group completing this metal will get you the palace guard weapon set uh and then these are the tour of duty medals that we got to get win win match in nexus siege uh get 15 locust boss eliminations cool get 30 lambent eliminations get 50 palace guard eliminations easy peasy uh or at least doesn't seem like anything too overly difficult uh and then they have some major changes for pve as a whole which thank god in general decreased elite drone base damage uh down one point i don't know how this is gonna feel because i don't know what the numbers feel like as far as a reference goes yet um but elite drones do a butt ton of damage and i'm totally down for that thank goodness they seem to be my main problem uh they increase the juvie execution delay four extra seconds so it shouldn't be an insta if you're right next to a juvie pop you're getting executed and you're dead should give time for combat medics or jacks to revive should give you time to crawl away if you're the one in that situation uh very much appreciate that uh they decrease the shield health as well as the shield time of it resetting uh substantially on the guardian so basically nerf to the elite drone nerf to juvie ner nerf to guardians and sentinels uh especially nerfs to guardians and sentinels given that being said i feel really good about playing as a gunner and being like the one to take out guardians and sentinels uh even more so now but hey cool beans that that seems nice and appreciated because it always seems like the times when we lose during like a sentinel and kestrel combo on a boss wave a lot of times it's because the sentinel is doing an unbelievably good job of flushing us out to get killed by the kestrel so i can appreciate that uh this is oh my reaction to this was something along the lines of when i initially heard this was a oh yes uh was they replaced execution rules with aggressive enemies in the default horde mutator list so whenever we're playing horde in private and we were just playing anything else execution rules were on given power drain is still there to be a pain in the butt but execution rules was one of those uh, i know i have a gunner video that's going to be going up uh what's today today's the 7th so it's going to be friday the 9th of april i have a gunner video going out and it immediately dawned on me uh when we were in the, like when we started the match i was shooting at something and i went oh yeah that's right we got execution rules on and i couldn't kill as much until it got up close and personal given i made it work but to see that is lovely plus i like aggressive enemies i think that's a really fun modifier uh this being said of course uh i'm always hoping that eventually we do get the full renovation project where we're able to mess with all of the modifiers that are available in private lobbies and uh, like if it, even if they limited it just to the choices that we can make like you know okay you can pick seven to make it up to masters or what have you um you can pick seven of whatever you want and all the combinations we could do like i i would have an endless amount of videos to make just <sighs> coalition if you ever see me uh if you ever see this just please that would <sighs> that if if that is ever possible to do that in private hordes so we can really experiment and have fun i i would i would i would love you for a really long time <laughs> just that's that's all i have to say that'd be great <laughs> uh let's see fixed an issue where the freezing hammer burst and freezing grenadiers mutators weren't dealing the correct amount of freezing damage i don't know if that's a good or a bad thing if that means they weren't doing enough freezing damage or were they doing too much freezing damage okay um fixed an issue where the wakatu would sometimes fail to appear Woo! yeah baby i'm okay with them fixing that good stuff good stuff now we're getting into classes so so the anchor they added 30 percent pistol damage to the anchor passive which the anchor passive being i got gears open it's muted but then i uh, probably put like you know nice little relaxing music underneath all of this so we go to anchor anchors passive is anyone who fires through your barrier deals 50 percent damage okay so we go back to that patch which is going to be yeah so added 30 percent pistol damage to the anchor passive so i guess that's really to help exploit if you're the anchor yourself and you're rolling with your uh if you're rolling with your bolt talk bleeding damage and stuff like that would be really nice excluded heavy weapons from anchors bullet chain skill card okay fair enough so be it um given i think most people that i know that play anchor now given my anchors level 18 so i have yet 
to unlock Bullet Chain, unfortunately. I gotta get on that. That's actually, I probably need to do that sooner rather than later. I probably need to be putting a lot of love into Anchor, which is always great because I love this class. It's a, it's a very easy one for me to pick up. Uh, da, 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 back over to here. I need to find out the power of Bullet Chain because I think that this is going to be, I think that it's nuts from what people are telling me. It's really dang strong. Add an extra amount of pistol damage while the shields are up. That seems great. Uh, okay, Infiltrator. The passive no longer triggers using non-ballistic weapons. So... I'm, I, I've, I've always been bad with the terminology. Ballistic, I'm assuming, just means your shotguns and stuff like that are the main ones you're going to be using it for. I guess that would be like, you know, precision weapons wouldn't count. So long shot M bar, um, your heavy weapons. So like your salvos, your try shots and stuff like that, they're not going to count for it. So be it. At least for me, the main way I was using it was your overkill was the way. Overkiller and Asher's always did a ton of damage. Um, but I could go for some more opinions on that because I don't think I know as much as I do on that. Uh, Demolitions. Passive now correctly doubles the duration of marks. Good. I, I'm terrible at marking stuff as demo and maybe this will encourage me to do more. So, Protector. The big knife skill card now correctly deals 130% damage at level 6. Uh, again, I don't know if that's spiking or decreasing. I think it's on the decreasing side from what people said. Uh, I would still really like to see more reworks done to the promotion classes overall at some point because the promotion classes a lot of times feel like underwhelming carbon, carbon copies of classes we've already got. Architect could use a little bit more love and diversity in its build beyond just a lot of the cards being similar to what we've already seen in different classes. The hologram is nice on Architect, sure. Um, Protector, uh, I'm really leveling up Blade Master after the tier list video, and the more I play Blade Master, the more I go, yeah, they could use more to make this more unique. I, I could go for some more cards and stuff like that here, uh, and same thing goes Slugger, making it more of a unique class beyond just what you would play in, like, what, in Veteran or in Infiltrator or in another close range class or what have you, and Striker could just use so much more, like, they're... If, if you basically don't use, uh, you, you've got five cards to really use. If you end up teaming up with a slugger, cool. And that's about it. Like th they could use a little bit more love and diversity. That's, I guess that's my main thing that I always want to keep bringing up whenever, uh, modifications are mentioned when it comes to your promotional classes is I think one of the ways to really make them relevant and bring them into a common fold especially in higher level play would be to give them some more cards and give them some more flexibility to really work out i know they meant the coalition i think they mentioned that they won't be modifying them just yet they won't be modifying a lot of classes but at least i want to just keep shouting and advocating that out uh that i would really love to see that there's there's a reason i why a lot of us that we play with don't end up playing promotionals or if somebody does play a promotional uh, a lot of times we are going, okay, get ready for it. And I do see a common uh, theme, even with people that have made tier lists alongside of mine, which thank you everybody that has, uh, they are also a bit underwhelming overall. But just, just I, I guess this was my moment that I wanted to really throw down on that, uh, is just, I hope that we see more improvements on the promotional classes. Uh, but hey, uh, I'll try this out and see how it works. I still got to level them. As you can see, they are still pretty underwhelming. 10, 14, 11, 11. In comparison to 16 to 19 across the board, 18, 16 to 18s across the board, 19s and 18s all across the board. There's a reason why. <laughs> anyway, this is the big one though. Combat Medic is getting a lot of love. They're adding in 30% rifle damage to the passive. So that's just gonna be just added, just in. So if we go and look at Combat Medic, Combat Medic, right now it's just, there we go. 50% health regeneration for you and your allies within 10 meters, which is cool, which is great. Um, but basically what that adds in and coincidentally enough, I, I double checked this before I started uh, this video. I am a level three on my custom Lancer, although I got gold, I'll probably upgrade it once this video is done. 30% um, increase in damage is a level three custom Lancer right out of the gate. What that's leading me to try out probably is going to be just really emphasizing the intervention combo. Um, it, like I'd probably do helpful headshots, get up intervention, team repair and custom Lancer. Uh, and just leave out overdoing it for now. I think that's probably going to be what I'm going to be trying out 
um whenever this update goes live and we give that a fair shot on like normal ward as well as then i'm very curious to try it out with nexus siege as well um fantastic buff there because they were definitely lacking in damage shows they want to make it very much an assault rifle class which i'll try and not be picking up the sniper rifles as much as i always do i think that's really cool i like that a lot uh they increased the radius of combat medics intervention skill card which again my reaction to that is <laughs> <laughs> because I, uh, oh my god yes like uh you want to talk about upgrades that i adore is this uh i i love this i love this I, I love the idea of intervention and i was continually trying to make it work now given i'm level seven so what it seems like is they're probably going to be doubling your meters so it's going to be what like 14 meters on level three what i'm at now got to get it to level uh four in which case it would be 16 is what i'm assuming i'm, I'm assuming it gradually goes up in the same way through and through fantastic Fa good good show good stuff gives some nice benefit to a combat medic staying in the back line i love that i love that thoroughly uh let's see increase stim healing per headshot on combat medics helpful headshots card this i feel like is kind of uh, is a little dummy thick if you ask me uh i like it though <laughs> i mean i'm here for it i always thought that in in it was well described in that video again uh for the helpful or for the nexus siege that uh helpful headshots is great to keep people stim rolling it is also a heal because it's healing and getting people to stim is what it is it is what the stim card feels like so it, it's always been a really helpful card and they mentioned that it's great because it can get rid of the chance of one shot kills and one shot downs you get beat in the face with a uh, warden mace you're you're protected with that basic stim to add extra stim on top of it is just cushion it's just that, that that's just fantastic i i think that's going to be this is going to be a really strong card or, or even more of, of a strong card now and i'm I've, i was already a huge fan of it i think whew, I, i'm like ooh, that's that's strong that's that's a little spicy and then they decrease team revive charge time from 300 seconds to 250 so you basically almost get a free minute out of it like it cool beans uh, and then that means, of course, that you can pair that with the cooldown reduction that you can get leveling it up. So you should be able to have it more rapid fire, which means that in turn, uh, get up gets a buff, team repair gets a buff, overdoing it gets a buff, and yeah, mainly those cards. Okay. <laughs> I was like, is there another team revive card? I'm like, no, there's not. Okay. Those are the main ones. That being said, still wouldn't mind if they ended up giving a few more perks to reviving people manually. But hey, I'll take intervention as a way to like this is a this is definitely a nice uh bridge and this is a very nice improvement. Uh but I wouldn't mind if they even did like so you have like suppressive recharge here where it recharges team revive by 115 seconds. Um I like that. That being said, I wouldn't mind being able to run a hardcore manual team a manual reviving combat medic where I was able to use like helpful headshots alongside of like uh my custom lancer and then throw in perfect condition and razor's edge uh alongside of say if there was a card that could reduce your cooldowns or give you healing or give you stim upon manual revives rather than strongly emphasizing the team revive would be nice uh but either way very cool there uh very nice patches and i believe that is everything as far as the updates uh, but then I will also throw in that there are the coalitions adding in the coalition army lancers again. I had this one in gears four, but it seems like they're keeping that to being partners. Uh, I don't know if that means I'm going to get it back. I would like to, but if not, I get it. It's all good. Uh, I never got this one though in gears four. So I'm hoping I do get it. I'll try signing up again for the coalition army. I mean, they, they know me. I, I got featured a couple times. I, I we'll see how it ends up going. I hope that I can get this because I do love this idea of like showing off that people are, hey, this is a regular content creator for the community. And plus, I love these Lancer skins. And also, if they if they don't want to give me the accommodation Lancer, I'm, I'm okay with the recruit because I like those colors more. So, <laughs> all good there. I, overall, I think there's a decent amount of like hearty content here for us to play for a little while. The only downside I guess I see is that a big chunk of it is only going to be available for two weeks and then after that two weeks is done okay so then you can cut out everything here and most of this video and then we're stuck and then we've got like you know these tweaks which are nice little tweaks i hope to see some more updates as we go along in this operation drop or of course i'm now getting now that i'm back in the 
in the even flow of gears uh, we'll see how long it feels waiting for the next operation drop and the next uh big updates and stuff like that but overall i'm very thoroughly excited uh this comes out april 13th which uh is what it's gonna be next tuesday i'll, I'll try and that that's gonna be a streaming day for me i'll be on gears uh most of the day i don't know what time it's gonna drop on the day does it even say maybe if i search april 13th it doesn't give me an exact time so some point in the day i'll just I, I might we might be on standby or we might just play some regular horde matches and then restart gears whenever the update drops and go from there on the day i'm very much looking forward to seeing what they got here uh looking forward to especially the new map and some of those updates i think are going to be fantastic uh and some really nice improvements for horde oh by the way uh <laughs> I, I just realized i wanted to say this too uh hey 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 so that combat medic increased intervention could we get like a tweak to that to the nomad intimidate while we're at it too while we're on that same subject you know that, that'd, that'd be cool that'd be cool <laughs> uh but overall i i'm stoked uh if if you enjoyed this video do the like sub bell things of course if you enjoyed it subscribe to the channel uh we play on twitch mainly on saturdays uh, I usually go from 11 a.m. till about 5 p.m. and then I gotta go out and do Uber. I'm trying to also bring Tuesdays in as a regular day, either Monday or Tuesdays, it's mainly Tuesdays, as a regular more evening-based stream to hit up gears more often and get more videos uh, backlogged and keep a regular schedule flowing as I also wanna be creating more and different content for this channel as well. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching and until the next video, stay thirsty my friends.